Okay, thank you all for coming tonight. I'm Christine Biglin from St. Mary's County Library. And I welcome you tonight and I appreciate you sharing your time with us. Uh, we are going to be talking about electric vehicles tonight. Uh, before we get started, I do have just a couple of housekeeping things to do. Uh, if you would like to add a comment or a link to something that you find interesting, you can put those in chat and you can find chat at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you click on that, it opens up a white box on the right hand side. At the very bottom is where you can type in a, a comment. Um, and right above that, you'll see who it's going to and it defaults to um, just panelists. But if you'd like to send out to panelists and attendees, just click on the triangle and you can choose that. Um, now, if you have a question for our panelists, please put it in Q&A for question and answer. Um, if we keep them separate, it will help us um, to make sure that we keep track of all of the questions. And if as we're going, you feel like you, your question was not answered, please put it in there again. Um, so, we have so much to talk about. Electric vehicles are on the road already, um, and it's going to be just getting bigger. More and more of the automakers are, are making plans to make more electric vehicles. Um, so, it's new technology, and it gives us lots and lots of questions. Um, so many, in fact, that we've broken this program into two parts. Tonight, we're going to be talking about um, what it's like to have one day to day. So, we have three uh, owners of different types of vehicles, and I'll be introducing them to you in just a moment. Um, the second part of our program is going to be three weeks from today, uh, and that is going to be talking about the future of electric vehicles in Southern Maryland. So we're going to be looking a little more at the big picture. Um, we're going to talk to the representative from Smeco and um, some car dealerships around the area to talk about what's available now, what the infrastructure is going to look like. Um, all of that will be in our follow-up program, because it was too much to cram into all of them. Uh, so, tonight we have our three electric vehicle operators. Uh, and first of all, I would like to introduce Derek Boonchastry. He has a Tesla Y. If you could please let us know how long you've had this um, and how you use it. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so, I actually got the Tesla Model Y in uh, December of 2020. Um, but uh, I had before that the Tesla Model 3 that we picked up in 2018. Um, we use both vehicles as our everyday driver. Um, my wife and I, uh, back, I guess, pre-COVID, my wife used to get to work every day, the Tesla, either one, the Y or the 3. Um, and then um, we would use it for all road trips. Um, currently, at the time, we had a family of three. Uh, we now have a family of four. We upgraded to the Y um, and um, we use that basically for everything. We have another vehicle in our garage that we roll out every once in a while when, you know, we want to make sure it still starts or something like that. But really for road trips or running to the grocery store or going to work or anything like that, we use, we use the Tesla. That's great. Okay, so next we have um, Eric Treslow. And what do you own and for how long and how do you use it? I have a 2019 Volkswagen e-Golf. Um, I, I bought that car because it didn't look weird like most of the other electrical vehicles. <laughs> Unless you know what you're looking at, you'd never know that that car was electric. Um, that it, it's become our pretty much go everywhere car now. Barely drive our gas powered vehicles. If we go on long trips, we do. We have a minivan in the truck. Um, but as far as running around the county or even to Annapolis or Baltimore, that's what we use. We've had it for about a year and a half, and it has about 15,000 miles on it. Even with COVID going on with us not you know, going to work as much or going out as much. So it really served us well. That's we great. Um, and our third guest is Jason Bone. And what do you drive for how long and how do you use it? Oh. Jason, I can't hear you. Sorry. So I drive a uh, 2021 Ford Mustang uh, Mach-E. Uh, I received the car in April. I had to uh, go on pre-order. Uh, I ordered in uh, July. And then at that point, it was just a first come, first serve. Uh, when they came out into the U.S. Uh, in January, I say U.S. because the car is uh, built in Mexico. Um, they did have some uh, issues uh, getting the car Um to the, the dealership, not just my car, but uh, in general, they had a, a recall 
that they had to uh, fix before they uh, released the vehicle. Um, I use it for a daily commute. Uh, my wife drives a, a Infiniti uh, SUV. Uh, she seems to prefer uh, driving my car if I am home. Um, and the furthest I've drove so far, I drove it to Ocean City last month. So I was about 150 miles. I didn't have any issues. Oh, that's great. Okay, so let me first ask you why you chose to have an electric vehicle. Um, Eric, you've had yours the longest. Why, why did you choose it? Uh, well, I've, I've always been a car guy ever since I was a little kid. I've always been in the tech. I work on my own cars, do all my own stuff. And uh, with the EV technology coming along, I was interested. I wanted to basically try it and see what it was like. So with the, the pricing on those, with the incentives and everything, I got my car about half what the sticker was. And they had it on the lot, went and picked it up the same day I wanted to go, decided to go do it. So um, I just wanted to try to see what it was like, and, and uh, I've been happy with it so far. Oh, that's your half. That sounds like a great deal. That's good. Um, Jason, why, why did you decide to go with your... Uh, so one thing I was at the time, uh, my car that I had previous, I was again up to about 180,000 miles. Uh, so I wanted something reliable. Uh, also uh, with the, the Ford, um, there's a $7,500 uh, tax credit. Uh, so I know that uh, certain manufacturers uh, weren't eligible for that because they've already run, uh, I believe, 200,000 cars uh, in their line. Uh, so with that, uh, also my work is uh, free chargers. Um, they had about uh, 10 to 15 of chargers out in the parking lot. So that was another huge incentive to uh, just take advantage of that. Oh, sure. Oh, and Derek, um, I may have misspoke because you said you had a, a Tesla previous to your Y. So, so maybe you've had it the longest. And you, uh, you're, you're, I mean, you're correct. He's, he's had his vehicle longer than I've had mine. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so we... Um, I know I've always, we've always liked Teslas. Um, it's something that we kind of fascinated that they're kind of changing the way cars are purchased and manufactured and things like that. And we were always interested in them. Um, and we really couldn't afford it until the Model 3 came out. Um, so when the Model 3 came out, we, we made that purchase. Um, and we, we had it for two years, uh, put about 50,000 miles on it. Um, and then when we had our second kid, it just got a little bit tight. So then um, like Jason did point out, when we bought the Model 3, we got the $7,500 tax credit, but with the Model Y, we, we didn't receive any federal incentives, um, still waiting on the state incentives, but um, they're kind of slow rolling, I think. So. Okay. Um, so I, I think one of the main things or the first things that people are concerned about is um, how to keep it charged. So... How do we do that? Um, Derek, let's start with you because we, we do see um, Tesla recharge stations. There are some at Harris Teeter now, like a bank of them that looks like this. So, so what, are your, what are your options for charging your car? Yeah, so Tesla's, I would, I would say, are probably pretty unique in that they, they own the, the process from start to finish. Um, so technically speaking, um, Teslas can charge at any charging station available. I mean, I can charge at a 110 outlet if I wanted to um, set my house. Um, so you can really charge at any of the ones that you see, like the ones from Speco or EVgo or ChargePoint, all those other ones. Um, but also Tesla adds, they, they have their own supercharging network that is all across the United States. I mean, it, for us, it's also a little bit in Mexico and Canada as well. Um, to me, what really sells me on a Tesla and will keep, probably keep me buying a Tesla um, until somebody else maybe has something uh, similar is it's fully integrated. So if I were, so for us, for example, I live in Great Mills. Um, we've traveled up to um, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So we've gone to South Carolina or Tennessee. Uh, we can just put in our in goal destination and it'll do a trip planner and it'll route, it'll plan the trip from start to finish. Uh, picking Tesla superchargers along the way, and it'll tell you exactly how long to stop for 15 minutes. Um, and the other thing that we do like about it as well is um, it takes into account, so since it's all kind of one network, uh, you can see here on the on the screen, so that's the one at Harris Cedar that I took a picture of in California, Maryland. 
Um, so it's a total of eight stalls, but there's only five stalls available. So you know that there's also one stall unavailable that's out of order. Um, and that there's a couple of, char there's other vehicles there charging right now. So as you kind of do a road trip, you can kind of, you can change the, that trip planner that Tesla does for you. And you can pick chargers further or closer to you, depending on your route. Um, but you know exactly who's there, what's working, what's not working. It tells you, you know, other things as well, like charge fees, idle fees. Um, and uh, that is extremely convenient. Uh, we took a trip once to Tennessee and um, there were a lot of, uh, they're called blink chargers. And you, a lot of them were broken or didn't work and you really don't know about it. So having it integrated directly into the vehicle um, is really amazing. Uh, it, it, and you can pretty much go, uh, they, they are right in saying you can pretty much go anywhere in the United States on the supercharging network um, and get to your end destination without any concerns. Wow, I, that, I'm sure that gives you a lot of peace of mind because it's not like you can stop at a gas station on your way. So yeah. that's yeah. great. Yeah, and we we actually when we purchased it, we we signed up for things like Charge Point and all the other third party chargers uh, networks. But honestly, since we've had the Tesla, we've never charged in one of those. We've always used a supercharger outside of if there's just a just a random one. Like for example, the library I know has one. You can technically charge there if we wanted to. But I think that charges. Sometimes you'll find a free one somewhere. But a lot of times the speed is also another factor for for electric vehicles. So. Um, uh, you know, like at home, I'm only getting 40 miles an hour recharge, so it kind of goes slow. Where at a supercharger, like I, this is at the Harris Teeter again, I was down about by 20%. And it, it starts really quickly. I think most of them do. They start, you know, pumping a lot of power into the pack at the beginning. But I'm getting there, you can see like 959 miles per hour. So I'll go from about, you know, 20% to that's about 90% in 30 minutes of, of just sitting there which does sound like a lot. I mean, I know the other guys on here could probably attest to them as well if you go on a road trip. Um, you don't realize you're like, if, like, at least for me, I've got two kids. So by the time we get out of the vehicle, we walk into the store, we all go to the bathroom, we hem and haul over what we're gonna eat or drink or whatever. Usually we're rushing out to the vehicle to move it so that we don't get charged an idle fee or so that somebody else can charge and we can get out of the way. Do you have to disconnect it as soon as it's charged? So they give you, I think it's a 15 minute grace period. So in the app, it'll tell you basically your vehicle's almost done charging. So when you're like 10 minutes out, it'll say, hey, you're 10 minutes out from being done. Uh, and it'll then tell you again in the app, hey, you're, you're done. And then it says you've got 15 minutes to move the vehicle before you get start, before you start accruing idle fees, which is, you can see there at the one at Harris Teeter is $1 a minute. Oh, if you a don't minute. Move the vehicle. Yep. Yeah. I see. They, they want you to clear the spot. They do. They, they don't want you to sit there and just hog it all day. So. I think that's, I think that's great. Yep. Um, yeah, that charge rate is great. Uh, I don't get anywhere near that charge rate, but uh, Tesla has been around for a lot longer. Uh, also, another thing that Tesla has that uh, I know my car does not, uh, you, your car comes with the adapter. So if, like you said, if you wanted to go to charge point for that uh, J1772 for the US connection, you, you already have that built into your car where if I wanted to use a Tesla supercharging station, then I would have to uh, buy an aftermarket anywhere from two to four hundred dollar um, adapter. I found on uh, eBay for using uh, Teslas, uh, and it doesn't give me that rate that I just saw. Um, I think that at max it was like eighty uh, watts max for the four hundred dollar uh, um, adapter. Oh my! Okay. Yeah, it, the the charging network for the Teslas, like I said, that. When somebody else catches up, I mean, I, I love the electric vehicles, but to me, the selling point is when I want to go on the road trip or I want to do something like I'm leaving my immediate area, having that charging network really makes it possible without having to even think about, you know, charging up or where I have to stop or anything like that. Yeah, they're def Tesla is definitely ahead of the pack in uh, every uh, brand. I mean, there's a lot of car companies coming out now, but they're just at the infancy trying to play catch up. Mm. Okay, so so Jason, this is um, pictures of what you have in your garage uh, for like when you charge at home. Because we were just talking about when you're on the road and uh, what your options are there. Oh, actually, why don't let why don't I ask you this first, Jason? Can you can you charge? You cannot charge at a Tesla charging spot. Is that correct? Uh, as of right now, no, and only if I get uh, uh, an adapter. Okay. Okay. So something uh, like two days ago. Elon Musk was talking about making the supercharging network available to other manufacturers. So they're oh. working on that. Yeah, I think uh, they're starting in Norway and then they're going to expand yeah. it out. 
Of course, they're vague. It's in the future, but it is it, coming. Yeah, it's sometime. Yeah. Oh, that, well, that would be great. I'm glad to hear it's in the works. Um, okay, so, but you can charge it at home. And in the center of this picture, is this um, like a, an outlet similar to what you have for your dryer? Yes, uh, so that's a, at least my, I'm not an electrician, but uh, uh, that's my understanding that it's uh, just like a dryer outlet. And uh, that's the one that I purchased. Um, unfortunately, my uh, fuse box was at the far corner of the house. Uh, so I wanted to get it uh, done before I finished off uh, the last remaining rooms. And uh, so I got an electrician to come in. Uh, he ran the wire, got the outlet. Uh, when I purchased the car, it came with. Oh, I think we lost your audio again, Jason. Oh, you know what? I think he's just frozen for the moment. On the charge with that. Um, and a full battery right now, uh, I'm getting about 225 miles per fill. But you got to also keep keep in mind that uh, your whole mindset changes. Um, like going from a gasoline car, you're pretty much only filling up when you're empty, whereas an electric vehicle, you're pretty much topping off. Um, and uh, I'm not sure of this, but things that I read, it's not good to uh, constantly charge at 100% for the longevity of the battery. Uh, every single day. So you can actually go into uh, the, the program and I'm sure you could do this with Tesla too. And it knows where you're at and uh, you can put, put in uh, programming for that outlet. Like uh, once I plug in only charged 85%, um, you can also tell it uh, what time if you go to, to work the same time every day uh, and it'll know not to charge until so many hours prior to you leaving. And then before you leave, it'll start your car up and uh, it'll start getting the, the cabin cool before you're uh, ready to go on your way to work. Oh, that's great. Oh, I have a couple of questions that came in. Um, one is, did it, did it take longer to charge the first time you had it? Like, was there yeah. any? Okay, it probably came yeah. already. Okay. Um, ha have any of you had to wait for a charging station when you were out on a trip? Like, is that common? I, I have not, but again, like I said, it's integrated. So we can, we have been driving on a road trip before and usually the, the Tesla trip planner will coordinate. So it'll skip heavy chargers and it might charge you before or after that heavy charger. But if we opt just to like, we're gonna just do whatever we want and go off the reservation with charging, we can always look ahead and see, okay, that one's really busy. So we're gonna go to the next one or maybe we'll, we can always see how many, what the utilization is at that charging station for the Tesla superchargers. Now you're typically, most people are gonna do 90% of their charging at home anyway. Yep. There's a nice thing about that is I have a, basically a gas station at my house, it's unlimited, and I have one at work too. So, and I'm paying 14 cents a kilowatt hour for power. So it really, it costs me, you know, five bucks a week to run this car. Uh, it's really cheap, very convenient, and, uh, with my with level two charge, like what Jason, the picture you're showing here is for me, that's about 24 miles in an hour. You know, if people are home for 12, 14 hours a night because they got to sleep sometime. Charge your car up while you go to sleep, you get out in the morning, you got a full time. And that's also assuming that you've burned through your two to 300 miles on that previous day, right? right. That it would cost take that long to uh, charge up. Oh. Yeah, as soon as we're talking about the, the range on these, um, just so that we have something for reference, uh, from Leonardtown to New York City is 275 miles. So when you're talking about a range of, you know, up to 300 miles, that, that's as far as that goes. Or you can get to Roanoke, Virginia. Um, from Prince Frederick, you can get to Pittsburgh. That's under 300 miles, um, just so we have a, an idea. Um, oh, and here was another question about the chargers. Are there idle fees at the non-Tesla chargers? I think Electrify America does have a fee on theirs. Yeah. They only use their chargers once, but. Uh... Okay. I think they're it gonna be, become more popular to, to have that idle fee because they don't want people, they are in usually convenient locations. So like by restaurants or, mm -hmm. you know, shopping malls and things like that. So I, I don't think they want people sitting there all day charging oh, them sure. for a long time. The more common thing is people charge a gas vehicle in a charging spot. 
very yeah. common, especially when you have those electrify America uh, chargers at a gas station, like off to the side somewhere. I've seen a lot of that. Oh, oh, that's too bad because yeah, it should be left open for the the ones who need it. Um, oh, and Eric, this is this is your um, home charger. Yep, I built that from a kit I got online. Um, it has uh, a Wi-Fi card in it and indication. I can control it with my phone from the house. Tell it when to charge, when not to. I can limit it, whatever I want to do. And I like, I'm kind of geeky about stuff like that. I like doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I put that together and and I've uh, been pretty happy with it so far. And it can be it can be sized to whatever you need. Like right now, it's it's only it's a 30 amp charger, but I can make it an 80 amp charger if I want to. So if I got a, a vehicle with a big charger on it, I could run a lot more power through it and it'll still do the same job. So. Oh, okay. And and were you able to do this all on your own or did you have to get an electrician involved? Um, <laughs> I did it on my own. I've done a lot of wiring. Oh, okay. So so maybe maybe it might involve an electrician for, for other people if they don't have that experience already. I've encouraged you to use a licensed electrician to do wiring on your house. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, I, I did touch on the range. Somebody asked how many miles do you typically get on a full charge? Depends on the battery size. Mine, mine is an advertised 125 mile range on my e-golf. It's really about 140 miles for in really good weather in the spring and fall about 150. I don't know how you drive it, but the other guys have bigger batteries than I do. So. Okay. We, for the Model Y, we can, um, we can do that that distance you said. We've actually done it once before. We can go from, we've been the same area as kind of New York. We can do about 300 miles. Um, and that's pretty realistic. I mean, I think we'll, if we were to charge, it gets to like 310, 315, but we're squeezing out of, to about 300 miles if, if we charge it up to 100%. Yes, yeah, so my car has uh, two different size batteries. Uh, I have the standard, uh, so I get about 225 miles. Um, I'm not too sure, probably close to 300 for the long range, uh, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but just the price comparison, uh, the long range battery was about a six to $7,000 option on my car, which I decided uh, that since I'm a commuter car that I wasn't going to spend the money for that. Okay. Um, oh, and this is uh, Derek's home charger. So, so each one looks um, a little different stylized for the car that it's made. What, what is this picture on the right, Derek? So the, the one on the right is what you receive when you purchase a Tesla. That Jason was talking about that. That you have the you get a 110 plug that's on the left, and you actually have the physical charger there in the middle, and then that one piece that's kind of sticking up, uh, kind of in the middle of the circle. That's the universal adapter that most like charge points uh, and the other chargers have. So if I were to go to like if I were to, if I were to go somewhere that does not have a Tesla supercharger. I could take that adapter, plug it into their connection, and then plug into my vehicle. That's great. I'll just say uh, there's one adapter that you don't want, and that's a C-H-A-D-M-O. Okay. And I only say that. I believe it's on the, the older Nissan Leafs uh, because uh, Nissan is no longer building cars with that type of adapter. So essentially, they're phasing out. It's more uh, uh, from Japan. Uh, Japan uses that, and it has a, a cap of a 50 kilowatt charge that uh, it can do, and there's no means of uh, getting any more uh, electricity out of that type of adapter. So that's my one recommendation that you okay. don't do not go with an older uh, leaf. Okay. Well, it's good to keep on top because the technology, I'm sure, is changing pretty fast. Um, so it's a lot to keep keep track of. Okay, let's talk about how you get information from your car. Uh, this is the Tesla interface. So what what are we looking at here, Derek? Yeah, so um, on the left-hand side, you have, that's that's actually my cell phone. So the, and I think more car manufacturers are doing this now as well. I heard Jason reference it, and I think there's a couple of, but there's actually no physical key. I have a, I have a key card. It's like a credit card, which is like a credit card, which is like my backup emergency key. Uh, in case my phone were to die or if I were to valet the vehicle or something like that. Um, but my cell phone in the app is my actual key and you pair it to the car. Um, I will admit in the beginning, back when we had the Model 3, there has been some issues, but since they've really worked those out, I mean, they're not really issues where I couldn't drive the vehicle, just like you'd go to the car, you'd go to open the door, and you'd have to wait, wait, wait. But now it's gotten really smooth. 
Um, they have this idea of walk up, walk away. So as you walk up to the vehicle to text your, your phone, you have to pull it out. You just open the door and it unlocks and you can sit down. Um, as long as you're, there's weight in the driver's seat and your key, your phone is on you, um, you could just engage it to drive and, and drive off. Um, in the event that your phone was dead, like I said, you, you have a, a credit card backup key. There's two of them that they provide you. I keep one in my wallet just in case. Um, and the other thing that's kind of unique, uh, some people like don't like about the Tesla is it only has one interface into the vehicle. So it's that screen in the middle. Um, there's nothing in front of my steering wheel uh, that shows me speed or anything like that. Uh, everything is controlled from that, that panel there. Things like windshield wipers, how you want your air vents, temperature of the vehicle, radio, um, you know, if you're listening to music, your directions. Um, everything happens within that vehicle, turning your lights on or off or anything like that or in that display. Um, the app as well is, is extremely, I mean, I don't know if I could ever have a vehicle without an app um, now because like Jason said, you can schedule these vehicles to do exactly what you want when you want to leave. Um, one of the things that I know I love and my wife loves is, you know, since they're not running gas, when it's really hot or really cold outside, you can have the garage shut and you can pre-cool, pre-heat, turn your heated seats on, turn your heated steering wheel on. Um, you can defrost the windows, you can do all of that without ever actually physically going to the vehicle. It's all done through the app. Um, even cool things like if I go pick my kid up from daycare and it's 100 degrees outside or whatever, I can, in the vehicle, I can set the vehicle to keep cool. So, because it's, again, it's not running and it'll just hold a temperature of whatever I set, 64, 65, and it'll just hold that for, I think, an hour um, unless the battery gets too low. And it could, you know, it just runs until it just holds that temperature for you. Um, but we can control, for us, we control all kinds of things in the, in the app. So open windows, close windows, lock the car, open the trunk, open the front trunk. Um, and if there's more advanced features you can get with the Tesla as well. So you have things like summon where you can drive the vehicle forward, back, or you can have it go through a parking lot to come get you. Um, that one's still a little iffy, but it, it, it is there as a function. I was like the Batmobile. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't work like the Batmobile. I've, I've seen it before, but it, it's getting there. It's getting a lot better. But moving it forward or back is actually extremely beneficial. We've been in positions before where somebody parks really close to you, or again, like I've got two kids and they don't know how to not open a door completely 100%. Um, so you can back the vehicle out. Just you hold it down and it'll back out until you tell it to stop. And then you can open the doors as much as you want. So that little feature is actually extremely beneficial and helpful. Um, and uh, one of the things to note as well, so Tesla does everything. They're, they're kind of like, and I think we'll touch on it a little bit, but they're a technology company. So some things can be frustrating at times. So if you want to submit a service request, like if you're having issues with your vehicle, they want you to really do it through the app. So you can see there's a service section there. I don't mind it. They have actually always been very good and they chat with you within the app. Um, but you send pictures, videos, um, explain your issues all through the app. So they really want you using and um, living in an app and, and controlling the vehicle from there. There was a question about your credit card key that you mentioned, um, Derek. Does that need to be charged or is it entirely mechanical? No, it's like RFID, so there's no charge that needs to be there. You just keep it in your wallet um, and you don't need to do anything with it. Okay, so that's that's nice to have that literally in your back pocket. Um, oh, so there was a question. This is a whole aspect of EVs. Um, let's talk a little about the maintenance costs because that's a big selling point for electric vehicles and what, what's different with those. Uh, Eric, would you like to start? Uh, well, there's there's no internal combustion engines. So you don't have to worry about oil changes and uh, the system to go along with that. I mean, the car does have tires that need to be replaced when they wear uh, brakes. Brakes wear less because uh, you can use regenerative braking. Basically, when you, when you go to slow down, you can use the motor, and put some of that speed and momentum that you have back in the battery it helps slow the car down and you can supplement your, your stopping with the brakes if you want to. My, the regenerative braking on my car isn't all that uh, aggressive, but uh, the Teslas are pretty aggressive as far as regen braking. You can actually uh, almost drive it like a golf cart, one pedal driving. You want to go, you push the gas pedal down, you let up on the gas pedal, it'll slow you down and stop you. And but that, that's Sorry, that's one maintenance aspect, but you know that we get wet washer fluids, wiper blades, uh, that kind of normal stuff every car has. Right, um, but along with not having an engine, therefore you don't have to do all of the engine maintenance. There's also no transmission in the regular sense. Is that correct? 
Yeah, it's just a gearbox. One speed gearbox connects the motor to the drive wheels. Um, do do any of you know like what the expected life of the battery is in the car? Like, is there information about that yet that you happen to know? Because I guess that would be the main thing that could fail on an electric car that would be a big expense. Is that right? Yeah, so I can only speak towards Tesla. They they warrant you the battery, I think, for, I think it's 10 years, 100,000 miles, and it won't degrade more than 70%. So if I were to get, let's say, a full charge right now, 310 miles, I would still get they guarantee me that in 10 years, 100,000 miles, I would still get, you know, 70% of that. Have, have any of you noticed that the range has dropped off at all? Like if, because you know, with your cell phone, the battery kind of degrades a little over time and it won't hold as much of a charge. Have, have any of you noticed that with your cars? I think the uh, temperature is the, probably the largest uh, load. Uh, your cabin temperature, your cell phone isn't going to mean, do uh, take that much in the grand scheme of things. I mean, you're sitting on a, a whole bed as a giant battery. But uh, you can actually see it. You can go into, and I'm sure you can do this with Tesla also. Uh, it'll tell you what, uh, how much energy is being diverted uh, to um, what you want to look at, if it's electronics or if it's cabin temperature or actually driving. Oh, that actually makes me think. Like, if you have, can you chart? Like, if if your kids are well, some of you have little kids. If they're, can they be using the electricity in the car at the same time that you're driving? You know, like have a cell phone plugged in. Yeah, when I went to Ocean City, uh, I hooked up the uh, Wi-Fi because uh, the car came with a free month through AT and T. So the kids were just getting uh, internet. Uh, through their into their iPads and watching Netflix, um, and yeah, there's chargers back there. You just, just plug them in, just like you would a regular car, and keep them charged up. Do you do you notice a difference? Does that affect your range at all that you've noticed? No. Oh, no. that's great. That's great. Um, uh, there's a question: Is there a warning if someone is in the back seat and you are out of the vehicle? Do you mean like? You're not in the car, but somebody's still in the car. Like a kid warning. So yeah. is that, is that an the Tesla doesn't, but one of the things the Tesla does have, which we have enabled, um, is it has um, the overheat protection. I don't know if this is the concern, but um, so for example, my vehicle won't, the internal cabin temperature won't get above 100 degrees. Um, it'll, AC will kick on automatically and it'll cool the car and keep it below 100. Um, but I don't know if somebody's in the vehicle. And it'll tell me if the door's left open or if a window's left open, but not if somebody's in them. Oh, okay. Um, I have a uh, reminder. Uh, also, if my kids are in the back um, and their seatbelts are uh, plugged in, it gives me a warning whenever the seatbelt's unplugged. But obviously okay. only if it detects that the, like if I'm driving by myself, that wouldn't come up because there's nobody in the back seat and the uh, seatbelt wasn't plugged in. But uh, when I drop off my kids at daycare and I leave the car running, I come back and now that seatbelt's unplugged and it's going to stay there until I blip, blip the message off. Oh, wow. That's, that's cool. Um, oh, there was an earlier question. How uh, This is about availability of the cars. Did it take long to get your car from the dealer? Did, did any of you have so at least have for, for me tesla does things again like a little bit differently i, I think jason also had the same situation uh, i'm not sure right here but so with, with the model three we waited two years but i reserved it like in 2016 and there were delays uh that was a very unique situation um but um for the model y we just waited two months but tesla really doesn't have vehicles a lot so anytime you make a vehicle it, you basically you're configuring your vehicle and then you're going to have some sort of wait time. Very rarely do they have any vehicles that you can just walk up to one day and pick up. It's more order online and then you'll get it in about a month to two months. Currently, I, it changes as the demand goes up. Okay. Right now, the car manufacturers never had a chip shortage. So they're shortening everything right now as far as inventory goes. Oh, okay. So if I you want something now, probably... I think there might be sitting on a lot of it. Ford dealership in Prince Frederick right now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, when I when I drove by, I saw 
a color that I, I wish I would have bought. In. <laughs> but at the time, the car wasn't even out yet. And I, I was just looking at YouTube pictures to try to determine. And that's not really the, the best way to look at all the, the colors online, right, until you actually see the car in person. But, but yeah, I have seen them over at the Ford dealership there. And uh, my instance was just because uh, I was waiting for the car to release. Yeah, I have a reservation for the uh, Cybertruck that I put in four days after they introduced it. It's the numbers I like with that, not the way it looks, but the numbers are pretty impressive. For that. Yeah, it is pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which, which one is that? That's the new Tesla pickup truck. It's supposed to come out at the, they're supposed to start making them at the end of this year. Oh, wow. They're making a 500 mile version with three motors and some pretty neat tech on it. 500 miles. Wow. Got a reservation as well. It was easy. It was like a hundred bucks, I think. Right. Uh, okay. Um, back to, we, we've been talking about the interface that you, you have with your vehicle. And this is um, what Jason has with the, with the Ford Mach-E. So what, what can you tell us about your interface, Jason? So the, the car did come with a one key, a one key fob, uh, but like the Tesla, um, my wife and I have both uh, connected our cell phones into the cars. So now their cell phones are uh, keys. Um, there is, uh, just like Tesla, I'm sure in the very beginning, there was uh, some compatibility issues. I've never been locked out of the car, but just a matter of it uh, taking time. Um, I get messages on my cell phone saying they've uh, uh, realized that there is an issue and that they are working on it and have gotten uh, uh, updates over there updates to uh, uh, make things a little bit better with the car. Um, so the screen uh, that, that that's right there is the uh, main screen. There's also another uh, instrument cluster uh, that you'll see like in another uh, slideshow with the miles per hour and uh, your percent battery life and mile range on it. Um, so what you see there is just whenever the car, kind of like when you're backing up uh, and you have a rear backup camera, uh, whenever you come has a proximity uh, 360 around the car. Uh, so if you're ever coming close um, to a, a structure and it picks up the, the sensor, it'll automatically give you all the cameras, uh, top down view, and then also reverse view. And that uh, also comes up if uh, you are uh, shift into reverse. Um, and, and Jason, Derek had mentioned that his the display on his, um, like the tablet there, was all, everything was included in that. Is, is it the same? No, so there, there is a separate instrument cluster uh, for information um, right above the steering wheel. Um, oh, that, oh. Okay. So I did, I have two screens essentially. Uh, one thing I do like about it, so it's just a, a regular screen, but uh, even if I'm using uh, Waze, uh, so I got uh, Android Auto, it's got Apple CarPlay. Um, if I am using uh, Waze, it'll bring up the map on the, this display of where I'm going and uh, if there's any police around and also uh, will give me directions to that small uh, cluster to display. Like for instance, in two miles, you're gonna have to make a left-hand turn and so on and so forth. Oh, that's nice that you can you can integrate it all. Um, oh, there was a question about the updates since these vehicles are so tech specific and software driven. Uh, how do you get the updates? Do you have to go back to the dealer or does it come through your car directly? Uh, so for Teslas, they're released. We get an update about once a month, um, and they're over the air. Um, usually, the car will tell you there's an update, and we'll connect over Wi-Fi, and it'll pull it down, and, and it'll shoot the update automatically. Okay. Um, oh, this is uh, Eric for your Volkswagen Eagle. This is this is what the instrumentation looks like, and and this looks a little more, um, you know, like what we expect from. From regular cars just a little bit different than what we've seen for the others yeah mine mine doesn't have there's a lot of tech mine does not have that the other guys have but the, the thing of difference is my car is was designed as a gasoline vehicle that was made into a electric uh but the mach -E and the tesla they were built to be electric cars there's a there's a difference there as far as mm -hmm. the things are included and the differences that are made so i mean like i said inside and out of mine if you didn't know what it was you you would think it was just a normal gas vehicle Mm 
Um, now there was, we had mentioned a little about um, the cost of the vehicles and different, at different times you might be able to get uh, rebates. Um, how, if people were looking at a new electric vehicle, what, how much would they expect it to cost? In the mid thirties, you can get a pretty decent EV now. You can get a standard range Model 3, you can get the Mach-E like Jason has, uh, and you can go up from there. I'll look to a Tesla Plaid Model S that is the fastest production vehicle in the world right now for what, $150,000. Ooh. It's faster than a $2 million Bugatti. So it's yeah, pretty, yeah. <laughs> wow. uh, it's up two seconds, zero to 60. I'd like to experience at some point in my life. But. Okay, so it seems like the prices are starting to come down to like closer to gas powered cars kind of average, but um, certainly it can have the big range of prices. Okay. So uh, since I just purchased mine a couple months ago, um, I, I have not received the tax credit yet because I'm uh, obviously waiting for the next uh, tax year, but uh, it was uh, $50,000 uh, and then with the tax credit, I'm down to about uh, 42 because it was just shy of 50. And uh, it's all the options with the exception of the standard range battery. But I do recommend getting an all wheel drive. Okay. Um, now I have some pictures of the exterior and interiors of your cars. Uh, I was, when I first started thinking about electric vehicles, I guess in my mind, I was thinking that they were gonna be small. Um, I might have been sort of confusing it with a smart car as, you know, being fuel efficient. And, and that's really not the case. Like these have average, like what you would expect from a car. And, as, and Eric, this is your car. And you were saying it, it was the standard gasoline powered car that was converted over. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a lot of space. Now, do you, we have some, while we're, while we're on the e-golf, Eric, um, do you have storage space in the front also, like where the trunk would be? Uh, in the, like where the engine would be? I mean, the engine, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. No, the, the motor and everything is up there right where the engine would be. It, oh, you know, okay. it, it looks different. I don't, have a, I don't have the convenience of the trunk like the other. That's a word oh, I, I thought I would use, but yeah. Yeah, but this is, this is great space inside. Yeah, very practical. And Derek, here is your car. Yep, so we have... Uh, I mean, you can kind of see it there. So uh, we have the back trunk. Um, that's just one of our strollers we have. Uh, and then underneath that, you can see on the bottom left, there's actually a bottom, like a bucket underneath there um, as well. So that is another set of storage. Uh, that's the chargers in there as well as the tire repair kit. And then uh, up top, that's where the, uh, where the Dr. Pepper is. That's the uh, front trunk um, that can hold the sizes. You can pretty much fit a carry-on bag in there. So if you're not an airplane, you should be able to fit it in that, uh, that front trunk. Oh, that's great. And here you can we get have... that with a third row also, right? Yeah. But like they have can... uh, different options. Yep. Yeah, they have a seven-seater as well. Um, I think it gets kind of tight back there, but you are correct. They yeah. just take away some of your trunk space. Cool. Oh, well, that's, that's a great option that you can have um, more passenger space. Yeah, you have to order that from the factory. Like, I can't get that added now. But if we'd order that initially from the factory, you could get a seven seater. So an extra two seats in the back. And then even uh, the captain seats, I think they call it, where your second row will just be two. So you essentially have an aisle to get back to the third one, where maybe that's the other Tesla. That's the, that's the X, yeah. So this yeah, one the still X. has the, the um, I guess, the bench seating there. Um, so you'll fold them down and crawl in the back. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and here we have the Mustang. Which has I've always thought of, thought of the Mustang as more of a of a sport a sporty car, um, but and it is, but it, it's got a lot of storage space as well. And I see oh I see the picture of the steering wheel. Is that the um, instrument it, cluster? Yeah. Okay. So it has information. You can see that the seatbelt warning that I was talking about. So my when I was taking this, my kids probably just got out of the car. <laughs> telling me that uh, the seatbelt's been unbuckled. Uh, so just like the other cars, the uh, rear seats can be folded down. Uh, there's also the panel underneath all of the uh, chairs that you see there that you can get another uh, uh, four inches to go down. 
Um, it's, I mean, I, I use it all the time, just even if I'm picking up the kids and just throwing it in the book bags, um, I just go back and uh, open up the, the back end. You can go ahead and just wave your foot, you know, under the rear bumper and then the, the back will open up on its own. And uh, you can also from the, uh, the main LCD screen, you can um, control. So like if I'm picking up groceries at Safeway, um, and the, the person's coming out with the groceries, I can hit the button without even getting out of the car, you know, open and uh, shut the, the back tailgate. Um, I also have uh, kind of the same space as the Tesla Y uh, in the front underneath the hood. I didn't take a picture of that. Uh, one unique thing that they put in uh, the Ford Mach-E is also a drain plug. So if you wanted to put a, uh, I, I don't really see any use I'm probably not going to use it, but if you wanted to make it into a cooler, essentially with ice, they even put uh, a couple spots where you can actually put uh, sodas or your beverage of choice. They actually have cup holders. Uh, and then there's also uh, uh, different dividers that you can take in and out. Uh, when I did go to Ocean City, uh, the one trip I was telling you about my longest trip in it so far, uh, we didn't have any room in the car uh, for groceries. Uh, while we were waiting to check in. So I was like, oh, well, we got this front trunk. So we're able to shove the groceries in there uh, while the car was still loaded uh, before we checked in. Oh, neat. Oh, and can you explain what this um, the Mustang picture is here on the... the yeah, so whenever, the, whenever it's uh, nighttime or the car just senses that it's dark, uh, whenever, so at one time I was, uh, leaving work at nighttime, uh, going up to my car, uh, as soon as it senses a certain proximity, um, the car's lights come on, um, not the, just the tail lights, but, uh, also the image on the driver's side and the passenger side, there's a light image that comes down and shoots on the floor. That's a fun feature. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me stop that right there. Um, so how we had at, we had talked about how you have less maintenance that needs to be done, but when you have the standard things that you still have to do with your car, uh, do you, can you go to a, just your neighborhood garage or do you need to do something special? Uh, <clears throat> I guess I can go first. So I did respond in chat as well, but the, the maintenance, at least for the Tesla suggested is you rotate tires every 6,200 miles. Um, I think you change the cabin air filter every two years. Uh, they check the brakes every two years. And then every four years, they change the AC coolant, stuff like that. So that's the actual maintenance schedule that they suggest for regular preventative maintenance. Um, but uh, for Tesla, there's not a lot of places you can go. Um, so if you have major issues, you're going to either Rockville or Tyson's or Richmond. Um, they do have mobile service. So with the Model 3, we had a few weird issues. Like, uh, for example, the brake light would be leaking a little bit. Like there's moisture getting in the brake light. Um, we could put in the service request and a mobile service technician would come out to us and he was replacing it. Um, same thing, we tried once to, for the first service. We did, uh, we wanted to see what the first service was. It was just them rotating tires. We put in the service request. And again, a, a mobile tech came to our house and actually just did it in our driveway. Um, rotated the tires and then filled them up with air and then off you went. So uh, according to Tesla, you can do about 80% of the maintenance through mobile service. Um, only thing we've done is that basic preventative maintenance, like rotating tires. Um, we had a, we had like a, the garage door opener installed. That was um, something we purchased that they came to our house to install. Um, and then also the brake light issue we had. And each time the mobile tech came out uh, to replace it. Uh, there was one issue we had initially again with the Model 3. I think it just left the factory kind of quick. The uh, high beams weren't balanced properly, so they were shining in everyone's faces as we drove. That one we had to take up to Rockville, but they fixed that one for us uh, pretty quickly. Did they charge you for the tire rotation? Uh, they did. It was about $75. So then at that point, <laughs> uh, I just do it myself now. So. I'm sure the brake light they fixed, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In some way, it is expensive, you know, that's like an oil change, you know? I mean, basically, if you think about it that way, um, you could maybe debate the convenience because I didn't- But have you can take house. it anywhere for tire rotation, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can take it. Um, there's a there's a form, and we've asked people before, several Tesla owners, 
we'll take it to Mr. Tire or Southern Maryland Tire. Yeah. Um, and they just lift it up, rotate the tires, and then off you go. Okay, and, and Jason and Eric, um, what, what do you do for when you need maintenance on your cars? You got it, Eric. I haven't really needed anything. I had, uh, actually, when I bought it, one of the speakers was was blown. I think they had taken somebody else's and swapped them or something while I was sitting on a lot. <clears throat> but I had to take it back to dealer for that. Other than that, I've had no issue as far as needing work done. Oh, that's great. And I guess you haven't had yours too long, Jason. So no, I, so I haven't even had a tire rotation yet um, since I've only had the car for four months. Mm -hmm. But that was another reason why uh, I ended up going with the Ford is because there's a Ford right in Prince Frederick where I bought the car from. Uh, that was one of my questions to them. Do they actually have technicians that can work on that? And they said yes. Uh, that they have sent uh, the technician, a, at least a technician, uh, to school to be able to work on the car. Um, but I can't speak on uh, longevity, but uh, the maintenance is uh, the same that's been uh, discussed. Um, uh, Derek, I saw you had replied to this, um, J Jason, or, Jason or Eric. Someone had asked about um, the Cadillac Larique, I believe, um, that they're considering. And if you had any thoughts about if they are being delayed due to chips. No, I thought it was 2023 for the for the Cadillac. Oh, that it's just not due out yet? Yeah. I, not necessarily delayed. I, I might be wrong about that, but uh, I don't, they're advertising it, but uh, I don't think it's, it's out. Um, I, I don't think that the chip is necessarily delaying that. It's just, oh, okay. it's just manufacturing. Production and stuff. Okay. And but I mean, as far as Cadillac, uh, my last car was a Cadillac. Uh, I absolutely loved it. I uh, drove it till the wheels fell off. And uh, yeah, it just, I'm kind of worried about how much Cadillac's going to charge for their first run. Because uh, those are not uh, uh, cheap cars by any means. Not that any of these cars are cheap, but they're just that extra luxury. Yeah. Um, oh, and there's a question for each of you. What's your favorite feature? of your vehicle. I like my dashboard. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> before I got this car, I knew this vehicle was a 2004. So this was a big leap into the present for us. Oh yeah. yeah but my dashboard is all, the other guys have screens too, but, but mine is a, you know, some, uh, I forget what they call it. Anyway, it just looks like something that came out of an Audi. But it's animated, it's got all the stuff, and it's got the map on the on the dash. Oh, yeah, so helpful for a, a good driving experience to have everything right there. And a nice display, it's like a large, that's good. Uh, at least for me, I, I mean, I don't want to, there's all kinds of things that I love about my vehicle. I think probably everyone on here probably loves them, but things that stand out for me at least are things like autopilot, where the vehicle will kind of drive itself a little bit. Um, and then there's also just the other features that I've really gotten used to. So like the Teslas have, for example, Netflix and Hulu in them. So when you are charging for those 15, 20 minute, 30 minute charges, whatever, you can pull up Netflix or Hulu and you can, you can watch your TV show or YouTube. Um, they've got a slew of games and other things in there that you can do while you're, while you're sitting there waiting. Um, and it's just other things, the, the acceleration, the smoothness of the vehicles. Um, I mean, it's, it, the, I mean, I, for us, I'll, I'll probably continue to always buy an electric vehicle um, unless something drastically changes. Glad you like it so much. Uh, Jason, do you have good pickup in your car? Like, does it, uh, does it accelerate fast? Yes, it accelerates uh, fast. I mean, that's just the nature of the electronic vehicle. Um, it's just there's absolutely no, there's no transmission, there's no lag, there's no, it's just you hit the pedal and it goes. And it doesn't matter if you're up to 60 miles an hour, you hit the pedal, you have the same amount of horsepower that you did uh, a low end torque. And uh, it, it's, it's fun, very fun to drive. Um, I just uh, love the technology. Obviously uh, the things that Derek mentioned uh, are not in my car with the, the Netflix uh, and so on and so forth, but that's just a matter of the manufacturer, you know, making deals um, I've been told that in a, in a future update that they were looking into it. 
Um, but the technology of these cars is just uh, uh, just such leaps and bounds. Um, driving the car is great. Uh, another thing that I like about it is um, the Android Auto. Uh, granted, you can get Android Auto just by getting another tape deck in your car or uh, Apple CarPlay, but it's just um, I put my car or I put my phone. Um, I don't even have to plug it in. It has a charging pad that I can put the phone on top of while it's charging. Uh, the car knows that the phone's in the car. Uh, so if my wife's texting me, I'm listening to music, um, a button will come up on the screen and I just tap it and it'll actually uh, tell me what the text message is. And uh, same for calling. And if I want to text, I can just hit one button and just talk to the car. Uh, just the, the technology is just uh, far, a, a giant leap. Oh, I know. It sounds so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All the stuff that they're packing into these is really great. And really Tesla paved the way for that because I don't think that the other car manufacturers, um, it, it basically comes down to Tesla put out a great product. Right. And uh, with that product, now all these other car manufacturers want a piece of that pie. So they're looking and taking apart and re-innovating. And if it, if it wasn't for them, I don't think that either Ford or uh, Volkswagen would have uh, uh, made this bound. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about the what the, the next step is. Uh, the second part to our electric vehicle program is gonna be three weeks from tonight. And we're gonna be expanding um, beyond what it's like day to day, which we talked about tonight. And we're gonna talk about what the future of EVs in Southern Maryland is. Uh, we'll be talking to the representative from SMECO uh, about the infrastructure plan uh, with charging stations and how it's going to affect the power company and alternative fuel, that sort of that future there. Um, and some car companies, because many of the Auto dealers, as Jason was just saying, are, are really jumping on board and, um, you know, they have big plans for the future. And seeing as we're with the library, I just wanted to let you know you can find out more. And this specifically is talking about e-magazines that you can get through our Libby app. And you can call or stop by the library if you'd like some help with that. So I would like to thank everyone who attended for sharing your time with us. And I would really like to thank um, the three of you for coming. This was a lot of fun and sharing your experience with your electric cars. Thank you. So thank you all. It was very nice. Good night, everyone. <laughs>